Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. Be too careful. Uh, oh, hang on, is this the uh, Young Doctors in Love uh, podcast? Oh, oh, it's geez. not, is it? Damn. There we go. Crikey, it, how it, sorry, wrong one. It's the same <laughs> podcast. You can't understand anything I'm saying, just like in Batman uh, in The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, exactly right. G'day, fans, and welcome to another exciting episode of uh, Talk Nerdy to Me. Yes, we're all stuck at home based on a curfew that just started just right now, in fact. So if we walk outside to the front door, we'd be pinged and uh, be fined accordingly. So, And, of course, you've got to wear masks whenever you go outside as well. So good day, Greg, and to Carol. Good to see people are joining us already on what is a miserable night in terms of the weather, in terms of the COVID-19 crisis and all the restrictions that are going on at the moment. So there's absolutely nothing positive going on except for us. And when I say us, I'm also referring to my co-hosts, MPS and Jeffro. How are we tonight, lads? Good. Excellent. Most excellent, dude. Sorry, I'm doing my best, Bill and Ted. <laughs> yeah, okay. I can feel like I'm being grounded for nothing, but, you know, that, that was my childhood. All right, so let's we're going to move on to our first presentation. I'm going to hand over MPS for this one. So MPS shows all your son. Go for it. All right, so you can put that up for me, dude. That would be appreciated. So for all those who have watched shows over the years and over their lifetimes, you all sort of think to yourself, "Who would I be if I was in this franchise? You know, who would I want to play? Who was the main sort of, you know, person who I think I would like to emulate?" Sort of thing. And we're going to start off with a few different shows. But we're going to start with Star Trek. And I'm not talking about just next year. I'm talking about all of them. So if you want to be an original series or if you want to be that. So I know everyone thinks that they want to be the captain. But in real honesty, um, I'd probably end up being security in that or pilot in one of the ships, you know. Or I'd be somewhere down the back in the hold, you know, sorting out cargo. That's where I'd be. <laughs> In the lower decks. <laughs> so in terms of Star Trek, you can pick any franchise, any version of it, whatever you want, your prime timeline or your, your other day timeline. Um, <laughs> but they're sort of the two places or the two sort of areas. I Because if I look at my real life sort of situation, I am more closer to uh, Worf, I think, um, sometimes in looks more than anything else with the scraggly hair. Um, I can't grow a beard like Riker, so I certainly can't be number one. Um, and I'm not bald, so I can't be the captain. So, and we, and we definitely know that you're not number two. I'm not number two. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a whole different franchise, isn't it? <laughs> number two. Um, so yeah, otherwise, I'd probably be some sort of weird alien, which you know makes sense. I like Colin has said he'd be uh, number. He'd like to play Q. Q's too easy though, you know. You mean all that power and all that? You'd get bored quickly. You know, he gets bored all the time. Good old Q. So, but I suppose if that works for you, I like Angie's uh, comment. Barclay. So uh, yeah, he could do that. Good old Barclay. He has a uh, some good adventures in the show. So there you go. Number two was. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I like Angie. Number two was Data, or maybe sometimes they treated him like number two. <laughs> Move on. What about you, Jeffro? Say something, mate. Well, I mean, I would think I would probably be uh, Troy because I thought um, being a ship's counsellor is a very uh, noble thing to, to be and, uh, you know, sort of certainly uh, uh, can't be dismissed as a uh, sort of a minor character because, I mean, she, she was very good and so I'd probably be Troy. I, I don't like so. responsibility but I like helping people so yeah. that's probably where I'd be. And seeing you in that costume, that'd be an interesting sort of fit, that's I, for sure. I was, I was going to say, who would see- who would want to see, see you Jeff later? I'll, I'll, I'll DM, DM you some messages, DM. <laughs> <laughs> oh, golly. So in terms of Star good. Trek, that's sort of where we're sort of sitting, okay? So that's fair enough. All right, in Star Wars, I always was going to play Luke, or at least a Jedi. I had no other character I wanted to play. I didn't want to be the bad guys at all. Um, and I think this was the one that I played the most with as a kid because I had one of those lightsabers, the hollow tubes where you swing them around and the air goes through them. 
So whatever happened to that, I don't know. Nowadays, they're worth an absolute small fortune. So, um, but yeah, I'd be I'd be more the Luke type of character at this sort of stage for this franchise. Otherwise, I'd be Darth Maul because Darth Maul's got the athletic prowess and the martial arts sort of stuff. Um, I can sort of do. But in all honesty, I probably would end up being just some red letterbox standing in the corner next to some old guy. So, yeah, I like what Ange said. Porkins. Um, uh, <laughs> good on you, Ange. Well done, son. And and Joe said Yoda. So that's all right. That's a pretty. That's a pretty, everybody loves Yoda. So I can understand. The problem with Yoda, of course, he can't speak properly. So you get all these words completely ass about. So. There you go. And just going back to the Star Trek one, uh, Michelle, regarding Guyana, at least you have the world's best hat collection, that's for sure. So uh, for Star Trek. Um, what about you, Jeff? What would you for do for Star Wars? Well, I, I mean, for me, you know, sort of probably the one that would closely resemble sort of uh, my personality and all that would be Chewbacca because, you know, I'm sort of tall and sort of uh, make a good uh, 2IC to, uh, to the wonderful Han Solo Darren Maxwell. But um, the one I'd probably relate to most, and, and this is this is goes back to when I was a kid, you know, when they say, oh, what was your favourite character? C-3PO. So there you have it. There's there's my, um, there's the one that I truly picked, C-3PO, because I like the fact that uh, uh, he was a faithful companion. He, he was very... Uh, very in control and and maybe too much so, and he was smart and um, and very much um, undervalued. So that's sort of almost how I felt as a teenager. So that was the one I probably most relate to, C three PO. It's kind of funny because there was a, a banquet in two thousand and three when Return of the Jedi turned twenty years old, or thirty years old, whichever it was. Think it was thirty years old. And Jeffro and I, we did. There was a bit of a sketch, and Jeffro got dressed as Chewbacca, and it's the first time he's ever worn a costume where he's actually too short for it, which was a kind of a different. Mm. Yeah, um, I'm no Peter like, Mayhew. Huh? I'm no Peter Mayhew, that's for sure. No, not, oh, this is a line. i just got to put this one up there. Um, yeah, good on you, Michelle. That sort of works for me. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, no arguments there. So, um, yeah, that sort of works. I don't know. Um, I like Carol said she'd like to be an Ewok because she's too short for a Stormtrooper. Well, there you go. That's actually quite important to me. And Alpha said he'd like to be a Jawa. So, uh, there you go. Uh, and uh, oh, hang on, he's made a change. He's gone from Porkins to Jabba the Hutt. Oh, dude, how's that? Yeah, an upgrade. Bloody hell! So, <laughs> gonk droid. What's he? Gonk? <laughs> gonk, gonk. It's funny they only called it a gonk droid just because of the noise. I mean, I have no idea what the word droid was actually called. Oh, look at Daniel. Wants the Han Solo or wedge. So uh, there you oh, go. Here. Okay. My family nose is running mine. <laughs> is that is that wedge or wedgie? Let's give Daniel a wedgie. I was going to say we can help Daniel with the wedgie side of things, so that's not a problem. Or is, or, or is that hand solo? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, golly. All right. Very good. Unless, along. You a, unless you give yourself a solo wedgie. Moving right along. Uh, we talk about the Batman franchise now. Yeah, I could be Batman. I got the suit. I got the muscles. I'm just missing the billionaire playboy bit. Um, but I think probably more than anything else, I'd probably end up being more Alfred at this stage, um, uh, or Chief O'Hara because he's a blithering idiot at times. So I'm sure I could um, say something stupid and get caught up in someone's um, trap quite easily. Yeah, classy. Yeah, that's us, Michelle. Classy all the way. So there you go. Um, I'd like to be anywhere uh, an assistant to Catwoman because I tell you what, I mean, she's a bit wacko in the head, but uh, um, yeah, you would certainly have plenty to look at. That's for sure. So that's all I can think of. Yeah, I, I would probably, I'd probably be uh, Chief O'Hara because I like to do that really stupid uh, Irish accent. Oh, Begora, Captain. <laughs> Oh, or, or, if you, or if you remember, I know that Dags was at my 40th and I had a Batman themed birthday party. And I think you had, what was it, Goon number two or something like that? Yeah, on your yeah that was from the movie. Yeah, yeah, Goon number two. Yep. So um, actually, Alf has actually said he, his name is actually Alfred. So that actually works. So there you go. He's got that one by, uh, by default. So there you go. So yeah, there's um, many characters you could be in that. And, and you could be, you know, not just the 60s, but any of the other Batman franchises. So you, the girls could be Poison Ivy or. Batgirl, even no one said Batgirl. So yeah, true. Catwoman, Catwoman just like rocks the system, though. That's the thing. So mm. there you go. Well, 
and then you go the Julie Newmar version yep. was certainly better of the three. Mm -hmm. uh, all righty then, Thunderbirds. At this point in time, I would just be a pilot and FAB the whole lot of you. So <clears throat> pilot to anyone, either Thunderbird one, two, or three. That's about it, really. I don't have any other parts of the show that I've been really. Actually, Colin said you should be uh, Arnie uh, as Mr. Freeze, the uh, MPS. There you go, dude. Give us a couple of lines, mate. I could, but I had to put you in the cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Hey, um, with, yeah. Um, yeah, with with Thunderbirds, it's like growing up as a kid, you always seem to have your favourites. So it's like you'd say, oh, I'm a Thunderbird 1 guy, I'm a Thunderbird 2 guy. Hardly anyone said Thunderbird 3 uh, or 4 or 5 for that matter. <laughs> but uh, if you had to choose uh, Thunderbirds, I was always and forever remain a Thunderbird 2 guy. So for me, Virgil would be uh, my uh, character of choice there. Mm. Very good. Yeah, I just I like you going MPS. I was going to say, I'd probably be more Thunderbird 2 because that is my favourite ship of the fleet. So Yeah. Um, uh, I like both Carol as said about uh, being Lady Penelope just because uh, that sort of works. Um, yeah, Colin wants to be Parker. Yeah, good on you, hey. Parker. Yes, my lady. <laughs> no, <he's in> Parker. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and Michelle said, doesn't want to, she doesn't want to be Lady Penelope, but she wants her stuff. Yeah, well, that's fair enough too. I mean, what would you give for a pink Rolls Royce? So uh, there you go. I always like the dude, whoever piloted uh, Thunderbird 4, that's the one that went underwater, eh? I reckon that was a cool looking ship. So Yeah. Um, but that was about it though. Yes. Very good. Very good. Now, Doctor Who, Doctor Who, you could be anyone or anything, and I know most people want to be the Doctor, and all that's very cool, but in actual fact, I'd probably want to be just one of the companions, simple as that, because, you know, you'd have your time, and, and again, things would get, and I'm going to say this, people are going to crack it with me, but things would get boring after a while, like doing the same old sort of thing, you know, rescuing this and creating that and destroying this and whatever the case is, you know, fighting Daleks, so it must be Tuesday again. Um, but, yeah, it's just another another... Cool franchise, but again, I would just probably be a companion in this one. Jeffrey, yeah. this is what your alley. Where you got, mate? Yeah, well, I I think I'd actually like to be uh, Captain Jack Harkness, but you know, dream on, baby. <laughs> sort of, that's not going to happen. Um, uh, not in reality. So I I certainly, uh, if I had, I mean, I'd like to be the master, but he's a bad guy. I can't pick bad guys, can I? Or or can Gosh, I? Can yeah. I? Can I? Yeah. Because the, that would be really cool because, I mean, he's uh, the intellectual equal of the Doctor and, um, damn, he comes up with some damn fine plans. So in terms of companions, companions are really good and um, uh, my favourite companion would be um, uh, Sarah Jane Smith. I mean, probably the most beloved companion of all the, uh, the Doctor's companions, I tend to say, uh, without a doubt. I mean, uh, what a great... Uh, person she was i mean she was strong she was vulnerable she um stood for what she believed in and um and would did so well in um as I said uh, being i think probably the most popular companion on the show i'll tell you what the doctor who um thing has just opened up a complete can of worms here I mean, have you seen all the through? so it's Ange, what's good tech karen, karen uh, tech's a bad guy Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, you're going to be a bad guy. Uh, Catherine has said about Sarah Jane, which is fine. Uh, Joe's never to... so she's out of the conversation. Uh, Why would you want to be the face of Bo? I mean, it's basically a, a sheet with a face on it. So that that's not very appealing, Ange. Yeah. Uh, actually, Jeff, if you want to be the master, what you're going to do is just walk out the door now without the mask on, get arrested by the police and say, you know, it's past curfew. I don't have a mask on, but I'm the master, so I can get away because I'm an evil master. I, I could <laughs> use my uh, tissue compression eliminator and just shrink myself and just get past the police. <laughs> oh, golly. No, uh, look, um, Carol wants to be a Cyberman. Okay. No pain, no emotions. Oh, golly, that's a bit harsh, isn't it? So, um. Oh, actually, I, that thought did cross my mind as Cybermen. I mean, sort of, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot going for Cybermen. But, um, yeah, I thought, well, I just don't want to be another, um, uh, you know, drone, essentially, I guess, for want of a better word. There you go. Uh, Amy Pond. Who's Amy Pond? Oh, Amy Pond. Yeah, well, everyone wants to be Amy Pond. Um, uh, she was Amelia, Amelia Pond. She was the yeah, redhead of... If you, if you know um, 
Karen Gillum from um, the um, uh, Get Guardians movie and uh, also the, um, oh, what's that one, Jumanji. She's okay. in that. Okay, very good. So there you go. I, I think the other character I'd been here is that, that potato head looking dude. I can't remember his his race. Don Rickles. Like that. <laughs> oh, you mean the Sontaran? The Sontaran. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. I'd probably be one of those because they have a weird sense of humour and, you know, that just sounds like me most days. <laughs> Very good. Well, Ange, Ange is a Sontaran as well, so you two can hang uh, out together and do sontaran things. Have a couple of experiments or something. <clears throat> we can make potato stuff. Yeah, very good. Anyway. All right. So we'll move along to the next franchise. Now, this is one that I don't remember ever watching. I know I wanted to, but I don't ever recall seeing it. So I think this one's more up your side of things, Jeffrey, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely, because uh, it was one of the first science fiction shows that, you know, I absolutely loved with uh, passion, you know. So um, I was there in 75 when it was screened on Channel 7 and sort of, uh, yeah, um, there's a lot of great characters in that one. So primarily you had um, uh, Martin Lando playing uh, John Kogic, Koenig. So he was, if, if you wanted to aspire to anybody, he would be the character because, I mean, he was such a great leader and he was also very compassionate, but he was also very strong and tough. And um, I loved Martin Lando from that point onwards. So saw all his movies and such. Um, the other character that, uh, if you ever wanted to be anybody, was um, Alan Carter, who was played by Australian Nick Tate. Now, it was interesting that when the show was running, that character, which was considered a minor character, was getting more fan mail than uh, any other actor in the show. So that sort of showed you how much of an um, impression that uh, Nick Tate sort of uh, created with that, uh, that character. So... Uh, in the second season, we saw Maya, and she was a shapeshifter, so that would be a pretty cool thing to be able to sort of have. Otherwise, um, if you were um, uh, a bit of an intellectual, then um, you could have gone with uh, Professor Bergman, played by Barry Morse. So um, yeah, there was the first season had a lot of strong uh, characters. The second season, maybe not quite so much. So, yeah, but uh, as I said, if you wanted... A great pick for a, a leader, um, John Koenig would be a fantastic choice. You can't go past him. So if you played the, what was it name was the lady's name was Maya? Is that right? The yeah. Shape, you could shift, then you could shape shift yourself into a Sontaran, and there you go. You were winning on both shows. So how good is that? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the Wonder Twins, you know, shape of a bucket of ice and form of an eagle. So yep. very good. All right, Planet of the Apes, another nice franchise. I'd probably be one of the apes to the to the left of the pack and and sitting down there just eating a banana or two because um, I <laughs> I love the newer actually, versions. Uh, yeah, actually, if you ever watch the film uh, Escape from the Planet of the Apes, uh, Zira loads bananas. So there you go. So they don't all like bananas by default. So you can blow that one out your ass, huh? I didn't say I was all the monkeys. I was just one ape, um, and I, and maybe I was purple and a grape ape, but who knows? Um, oh God! <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I've seen bits and pieces of the original series of movies and the the TV series. I don't remember much. Of, I've got them here. I've, I'm started watching them a couple of years ago. I never got through them, but the newer versions I do like a lot. So, but yeah, I'd just be a standard ape at this point in time. Yeah, the funny thing about the apes is, of course, you've got the three different types. You've got the gorillas, the chimpanzees, and the orangutans, and they've all got completely different personalities depending on whether you like the aggressive side, the the intellectual side, or just the middle dude. Um, so if you say, yeah, you almost got to clarify which one you're sort of following. So um, uh, there you go. I like that from Aaron. Lockdown is turning him into a Fontara, and, yeah, I think we're all the <laughs> same right there, Aaron. So <laughs> I reckon that's a good line, that one. There you go. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I... I um... I, I like <laughs> Colin's choice of actually no, it's um, Elf's choice, uh, General Urko. So yeah. I found that a fascinating uh, character because he he was a very complex bad guy. So uh, um, yeah. he had his I, motivations I, and he believed he was right. But uh, I would pick Doctor Zayas because that way I could be immortalized in the Simpsons song forever. Doctor Zayas, Doctor Zayas, Doctor Zayas, Doctor Zayas, Doctor Zayas. It almost 
if you're going to be an ape, you'd want to be the lawgiver because at least that's the one that everybody talks about. You know, you're the one who wrote the sacred scrolls and is like you're like immortalized forever. You're the equivalent of an ape god. So uh, that's kind of groovy. So um, there you go. Um, so there you go. Hang on. What? Yeah, right. William, you're getting, you're getting you're getting like factual information about bananas coming from South Americans. So um, there you go. <laughs> very, very good. Yeah, but so, if it was a planet of the apes, then some of them would be in South America, so they would be eating bananas. So there we go. We've point. beaten science with nothing. I like that one. Um, very good. <laughs> All right, moving along. Fast game. Like now this hang on. I like what Colin said. With the COVID nineteen outbreak, the age could still rule the world. Well, you could look at from the politicians from that point of view, but uh, let's move on, shall we? Because that's just uh, another another discussion for another day. So there you go. Oh, here we go. Really obscure. In terms of fast game, another fantastic sci fi adventure, Australian made. Um, and I've just gone blank on his name. I'd be the big fella in orange. Um, who's Doctor Zayas? <laughs> 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 so yeah, I've just drawn a blank on on his name. Da 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 da. da. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were gonna go decorate, da, da, decorate. But anyway, um, someone yeah, will come so up I, with it. Yeah, someone will come <laughs> up with it. One of the smarty um, pants will come up with it. Yeah. So yeah, really? that's who I'd probably be in. End up in in Farscape. Is it Dargo? Probably. Yeah. That sounds oh, just, had right. a, just had a flashback to the name Dargo. No. Oh, here we go. Dargo. There we go. Thanks, Ange. Yeah. <laughs> Ange knows who's on, who I'm talking about. Very good. I'd move along. Sorry, you guys. Anyone in, in either? Never watched in, it. Never I watched never, it? Really, never really watched it. So, um, um, do I go on to the next one, please? So very, very good. Right. I like that. Everybody seems to know who Dargo is from Catherine and Michelle and Daniel. Leo. It's like, all right, it's Dargo. We got. <laughs> Starship Troopers. I thought I'd throw this one in because you know you can be promoted and demoted at the drop of a hat in this series of films, and we'll talk about the first one and only the first one. The rest yeah. don't um, <laughs> don't really exist. Although the third one isn't that bad, but that's another story. So I'd just be yeah. some sort of dude getting promoted and demoted and shot at and losing body bits here and there, and yeah. you know asking people if they want to live forever. Yeah, very good, exactly. Who right. wants to live forever? Start singing crikeys. Um, I like the I like the news broadcast from this show. It's an ugly planet, it's a bug planet. So uh there you go. So very, very cool. So Frank or the guy on TV who says, Frankly, I find the concept of bugs who can think offensive. But I wouldn't want to be him, but he just sounded cool. So there you go. We should ask the question, do you want to know more? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Robocop, dude, but uh yeah, anyway. So, yes. uh, Robocop and this as well. Oh, so. here we go. Ange wants to be the brain bug. Oh, there you go. Oh. How good is that? So, there you there go. go. Mm. Uh, v, which I can't remember much from when I watched it originally back in the 80s. Uh, didn't catch up with it much in the newer version. So um, I don't know who I'd be in this one. But this is more um, up yours, Greg Dags. Just quickly, William has said Clancy Brown's character. Well, Clancy Brown's character ends up becoming the hero of uh, Starship Trooper, so that's not a bad uh, choice. And mm. you're right, Michelle, film two definitely does not count. Maybe we'll, one day we'll have a discussion about um, sequels of films or whatever that absolutely sucked the big one, and Starship Troopers 2 was definitely one of those. Um, so with V, uh, I think if you're going to pick the bad guys, um, uh, yeah, Frank Ashmore's character, um, Martin, would be on the top of most people's list because he was such a, a cool dude. In fact, he was so cool that when they killed him off in the TV series in the pilot episode, there was fan outrage. They were pissed off. So they ended up bringing him back uh, as his twin brother, right? Um, I can't think of his second, his, the twin brother's name. But the problem is, of course, that the, the outside skin isn't there how they look. They're actual lizards, right? So why would the twin brother happen to have exactly the same outer covering as what Martin did? Mm. So... Uh, I reckon that that's that's kind of ridiculous, but uh, Martin, for a lot of people, was definitely the coolest guy in the V. Uh, camp. I will, um, I'll see you, Martin, and I will raise you a ham Tyler. So oh. Michael Ironside was simply just the coolest, get out, badass, good guy, anti-hero that you could ever possibly want to see in a television series. So uh, that's that's my answer. I thought you were going to say, because I just saw Angela's comment there. I said, oh, I see your mind. I'm going to raise you a willy. That's what I thought you were going to say. 
<laughs> well, if you want me to raise my willy, then just let me know and I will. So just... <laughs> um, so now, can you remember what they said? Now, willy was such a great saviour to the, to, the, to, the, to the war. They made a statue of him and they've decided to erect a willy. <laughs> Actually, did you did you ever hear the uh, the special song that they wrote for him? Willie, don't be a hero. <laughs> oh. oh my god! Okay, I, I don't think we played the musical episode as such, but thanks, Jeffro. We'll uh, the greatest hits of Jeffro. Yeah, but yeah, actually, a lot of people would pick Willie because when he was moonlighting as an alien, he decided to run off and become Freddy Krueger. So uh, <laughs> there you go. Oh golly! So there you go. Very good. Oh, one of the current favourites, Firefly. Mm. You know, I, I think um, everyone wants to be Mal. You know, he's pretty cool, the, the dude with the plan. Um, but I think at the end of the day, I'm probably more like Jane. And Jane is the boy, the big dude at the back. Um, <clears throat> not too many brains brains in there, but, you know, a bit of brawn. Uh, I'd otherwise... Be more like, um, I'd be more like Wash, you know, with his toys going... <laughs> I'm a leaf on the wind. I'm a leaf on the wind. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'd probably be Jane more than anything else. The captain would be cool, but, uh, yeah. Too many arguments with Anara. Yeah. Not go. that you wouldn't want to... Not that you wouldn't want to um, have some arguments with Anara. And I read <laughs> Daniel's comment very wrong just then. Um, <laughs> 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 oh geez. Very good. So, oh, God. Yeah. Move on. Yeah. Moving on. Uh Battlestar Galactica. You know, it doesn't matter if it's the original series or the, the updated version. Um I think at the end of the day I just want to fly a, um a Viper. Hmm. It's one of those very cool Vipers. Gen 1, preferably, not Gen 2, because I didn't like the Gen 2 ones. Um, but, yeah, just a Viper pilot. Very good. Yeah. Hmm. I'd probably yeah. be number six, because, I mean, with a body like that, who wouldn't want to be? <laughs> well, you could, you could if you're a Cylon. Yes, indeed. Hmm. So, there you go. Um, so Daniel said Apollo, so that's all pretty groovy. So... Um, yeah, there's a lot of characters to pick from Battlestar, both versions, which is kind of groovy. So, yeah, uh, I mean, um, yeah. do you go Starbuck version one or Starbuck version two? You know, well, which Michelle one's said, the better Starbuck? Well, Michelle said Gen two, which makes sense. So, um, and Ange like Tyrrell. Oh, he's actually there's some very good characters in the show, actually. So, uh, um, yeah, I like Gator myself. I reckon he was an excellent character, had a bit of an unfortunate end, but uh, from the new series, but uh, yeah, very, very cool. So, there you go. Yeah, I think good. that series, that new series, is a whole discussion on itself. Yeah, there we go. Very good. Uh, now, look, because it's a, a superhero sort of thing, I'd probably be more the Maxwell character. The fact that I have the suit and I've worn it, you know, apparently makes me the bravest man around. Because um, if you remember Con 80, the uh, trivia night, I wore the suit. So for those who were there and you saw it, <laughs> Oh, you unfortunate people. Um, <laughs> my eyes, my eyes. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I'd probably be more the Maxwell character in this one. I couldn't be as, as I don't want to say blissful, blissfully, but fairly ignorant about superheroes as um, Ralph was. Very good. I like for the previous one, a couple of people have actually said they want to be the Daggett. So uh, <laughs> there you go. So things are so bad they want to be a, uh, a chimpanzee in a robot costume. So there you go. So very good. Actually, I'll go. I'll go. Uh, Veronica Hamill's character because she was the only smart one amongst the whole three of them. <laughs> yeah, she was. Um, and I think, in terms of Red Dwarf, um, I never watched the series when it came out originally in the nineties. But uh, where I used to work, apparently, I acted very much like Crichton to a couple of my superiors. And so that was my nickname for a little while there until they both left. Um, so, so yeah, in actual fact, after watching it in recent years, I probably am closer to Crichton. 
Um, I would actually go with the first Holly. Um, I reckon he was grouse. Uh, I mm. watched the show before Crichton came into it, so it was just the four guys. Uh, but I did like Cat. The concept of con the concept of Cat was very, very clever. Uh, but uh, if I was going to pick a character, I'd say Holly. Yeah, Holly was great. Jeffrey? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll go I'll go the uh, true hero, which is uh, Lister. So uh, just to be a little bit different. So, yeah, um, a slob, but uh, not like me, but um, very much a, a cool guy. Very in my good. own mind in your own mind yes <laughs> very good i always liked um the cat's thing when he's like he's walking down and like i think he sees a mirror and he says i look good and he spins around and he says i still look good <laughs> That's a great at, at, <laughs> at least with uh picking uh Crichton, you've got a, a groinal socket so you can sort of do a real triple <laughs> polaroid on that one so there's a good choice there good on you very good <laughs> well done and i and I can interchange my head too, apparently. So there you go. Yeah, that brings you back to the Willy thing from me, doesn't it? So well, there you go. Well, um, Ange wants and Ange wants a rimmer choice. Yeah, as one does. Very good. Um, all right. Is there any more uh, MPS? No, that's it. That was the last no. slide of the show. Very very cool. Now, Jeffo, is there anything you wanted to add into all that? Yeah, I I thought of a few uh, people that uh, I wouldn't want to be. So. Here's my very short list of um, people that I, I wouldn't want to be in terms of uh, a hero. So Riddick, I mean, what a living hell. Uh, Robert Neville from The Amiga Man, well, loneliness sucks. Uh, James Cole from 12 Mon Monkeys, well, his life just sucked big time. Uh, Fox Mulder, Toxic Workplace, that's all I can say. Uh, Jean-Luc Picard, uh, four initials, PTSD. Um McCready from the Thim thing, oh, damn yeah. cold. Wouldn't want to be him. Uh, Robocop, no life. Um, Seth Brundle, uh, Gina Davis, but yuck. Uh, Neo and the Matrix. Um, well, give me some steak. Um, and uh, Snake Pliskin, um, who wants some ocular vision. That's all I can say. So there's some there's some choices that uh, people that I wouldn't want to be. Yeah, that's uh, actually I like that one because you could actually have a good discussion about why those characters uh, didn't exactly have a good day at the office. And the, the Seth Brunel one, uh, yeah, that's actually very cool. And that's from the from the fly for those who didn't know. Very good stuff. So there you go. So you can all dream to be something that you want to be or not want to be in this case. And uh, so next time you're watching your favourite franchises, you can just sit back and go, you know what? I'd like to be that that dude. That dude. That is a cool dude. Would do that. So uh, how good is that? Very very groovy. All right. So um, I think we'll uh, wrap this up on this cold uh, winter's night. Make sure you wear your masks and uh, stay inside because the curfew is still going for another seven hours at least. So there you go. Um, do, any final words from uh, my two lads? I'll say uh, goodnight, Deacon, because he's uh, leaving us, so he's contributed a bit on the uh, the comments. So, night, night. Very good. And I'll say that if you do happen to get uh, pulled over by the authorities, there's only two things that you need to say to them: I know nothing. I see nothing. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, everybody, and make sure for myself, the important thing is on the night like tonight, got your masks on, look after the curfew, and, of course, you got to <gasps> stay nerdy. All right, take care, guys. Enjoy yourselves. Okay, see you next week. Okay, see boy. you next week. <coughs>